This is the unboxing of the i5 CPU. Used by NASA. <laughs> Only NASA uses that. We're going to Mars. Oh yes, I believe this is one of the most expensive parts of the PC build uh, right now. But again, the PC build is not oh, nice. It's not based for gaming. It's mostly for uh, a nice performance PC. Nice. So we can leave that over here. So here's the unboxing of the cooler for the CPU. It's a big white shadow rock slim. Yes, that will keep our CPU cool. Nice. Is it all in? Yeah. yeah. So the unboxing of the NVMe SSD drive. This is a Western Digital Blue 500 GB NVMe. So it should fit directly into the motherboard slot. Unboxing of the Vengeance LPX uh, RAM cards, RAM slots. Major unboxing of our motherboard. So this is a Gigabyte Z490M Micro TX uh, motherboard, uh, and this is compatible with the 10th gen CPUs. So it was a bit of a pain to that I had to change motherboard when I selected the 10th gen i5, but it's good to have a. Uh, and uh, basically an uh, unlocked CPU so you can overclock it. Do you want to open it up? Ah, oh, yes. So we can see all the ports here. Yeah, this is the black magic. And here's all the ports that you have in this one. Very good. You can set it, set it down. Right, now to the gaming enthusiasts, we have the GeForce GTX 6050 Super. <laughs> so initially I went for the 1650, uh, but then I found that the uh, I could get the 1650 Super on the same budget, on the same exact price. So I thought, yeah, let's go for it. Oh, nice. It's 
all protected. Caution, it's dangerous. Okay. No worries at all. We uh, we are protected. We are grounded over here, as you can see. So <laughs> we're not afraid about static or anything, and we're definitely not sitting on a carpet. So we're okay. Is it tight, but not too tight? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And let's do the first fling of the... Oh, wow. Nice. Perfect. Nice. Last but not least, uh, we have the power supply, it's a Cylon, Cylon 500 watts, uh, 80 plus, I guess this is a good quality power supply. So only for 80, 80 years old. 80 years old gamers over. <laughs> so the, the main thing is that uh, this PC build needed actually a 350 power supply, but then I found one which was a very good price, 500 watts. So it can be can make the PC build more future proof. So why not? Is it like a safe? have a lot of stuff over here so this is the mains deep in main socket plug and then we have all the connectors Well protected, well protected into its bubble wrap. Nice. So this is not a modular power supply, but all of the cables are black, which I definitely like that. Uh, it has nice stickers. Anyway, you won't be able to see it, but yeah, this is the main unboxing of everything. So I've put my glasses on, so it means we're serious uh, now. So we have the motherboard. And because the motherboard is, of course, sensitive to electrostatic discharges, we have the power supply and it's plugged in, so we can touch it and uh, hope for the best uh, to ground ourselves. So initially, this is the let me bring it here. This is the place where the CPU, uh, where we place the CPU, and uh, we can see that this is uh, for a 12 uh, socket type, which is the correct one for the 10th gen Intel. Uh, so what we do now, so if we... so yeah, this is this is the main point. So we're gonna open it right now. This should open the slot. We have to be careful not to leave any residue and you will see that on one corner of that it will have an arrow there's the arrow on this side yeah okay so if uh, we see the arrow we're gonna undo the, un uh, unpack the cpu and we're gonna see that it has an arrow as well over here So it has an arrow over here, and the arrow is over here. You said you can see it on the yeah, on the perfect. PCB. Yeah, so we take the CPU carefully. And we have to place it in here. Yes, 
that feels nice. So now, after it's in, and we can fill it in, we're careful not to leave any oil residue on the top. And without taking off the plastic bit, we just press it into place. And this pops out, which is good. Oh, that felt tight. But not too tight, yeah, exactly. So now the CPU is on. Again, we're careful not to do any electro, not to discharge any electrostatic on it or any electricity at any point. And uh, not to leave any oil residue where the thermal compound is gonna be applied for the cooler. Uh, we are careful and uh, we're not throwing this away, we're not throwing the plastic part away because in case the motherboard is uh, faulty, we will have to keep that in the motherboard in order, in order to uh, be able to return this and uh, get a refund or replace it. So take care of that, we, we will need it and you will need it all the life of the motherboard. So we have the motherboard here and if we do a close-up, you will see that uh, Come, come do a close-up. You will see that uh, this, these are the slots for the RAM, for the RAM, Random Access Memory. And you will see that two of them uh, have a lighter grey color. So these are the ones that we're going to use first. And we're going to use these ones specifically uh, for uh, the two sticks of RAM that we have. So, because if we use like the first two ones, we're not going to have support for a dual channel uh, RAM. So we won't have the full capacity basically of the RAM usable in the PC. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the two lighter gray ones for a start. So initially we pop them out. And then we have the RAM sticks, the RAM sticks. We're careful again, we don't want to put any oil residue on the pins. So now this is, so after we place that, after we, after we place that, uh, the stick into the slot, uh, we're gonna, so we put it in and we're gonna expect two clicks to make sure that it's securely fit. So one and two. So these are the two clicks that we're supposed to hear. And then we do the same on the second one. So we put it into the slot. And one click, second click. Perfect. So there you have it. These are the two RAM sticks. And now because we use the we used every other basically slot. We have a dual RAM support in them. So now, uh, so we have the cooler over here, which is a big white, and this will basically fit on top of the CPU over here, which, uh, wow, that, that will look very good. But of course, in order to uh, maximize the heat uh, transfer uh, between the CPU and the cooler, we will need to apply some thermal compound on the CPU. Uh, I believe with this uh, cooler over here, we have some uh, mounting bits, which, oh my goodness, it's gonna be nice to uh, put this in. But we should have some thermal compound with here as well. So this is it. This is the thermal compound. IV. That, <laughs> in an IV. <laughs> That we're gonna basically apply on a like on a pea size uh, into the middle of uh, on the top of the CPU, and uh, then we're gonna apply the cooler. But first of all, we need to put the bracketry into these uh, four holes uh, for the cooler to be mounted at. So uh, we're gonna show you how to do that in uh, in, in just a bit. So these are the uh, components that we found into the Intel bag 
of course we're going to need the thermal compound. Uh, uh, this will be, I believe, the bracket that will fit on the back of the CPU of the motherboard. So we're going to have the motherboard and we're going to fit this on the back of it. And uh, from the top of the CPU, we're going to fit these two brackets. Like that. And uh, I guess then we will be able to mount the cooler with these uh, screws over here. Let's try it and see how it goes. So what we found out uh, is that uh, first of all we have to take uh, these brackets and the small Phillips uh, flat screws. And then we, ha we have to basically install it on the end of uh, on the bottom of uh, the cooler with the feet facing downwards so with an offset downwards does the screw the screw goes from the bottom yes so it always helps having magnetic screwdrivers i hope this is on one Perfect, so we're not tightening too much because it has to be tight, but not too tight. Then we take the second one to secure it. And can I say that this works like a charm? So now, after we installed both uh, of uh, the mounting uh, plates, uh, brackets on the fan, we're gonna do the second part, which is uh, fitting these uh, small uh, nuts, I guess. It's a nut with a thread. So screw with the file and then a nut going into it. So this, will, this thread will connect to to the back plate, this one. One. So we connected one over here and we put a nut underneath it and tighten it. Two. And uh, we've, we were also given a nice tool to basically... We can tight it later, yeah. So you can tight uh, all the nuts. How tight does it have to be, Alex? Does it have to be finger tight? Well, at the moment, yeah, but when you when you fix it on the board, I think you can tighten it more. But anyway, wait, let's put them first. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be too tight. Well, not like uh, crushing tight. So uh, now we're gonna uh, fix the back plate uh, onto the back plate of the motherboard, and this is gonna be the structural basic way and thing that the fun will be based on. So for this we're using of course the black bracket and what we're gonna do we're just gonna slide through these screws. You may want to uh, screw them in a bit just to help you but literally you have to basically wiggle it in and it will go in and uh, we will put all four in there. So oh, now what we're gonna use it's uh, on the other side after we turn uh, the motherboard the other uh, facing the other way we're gonna use these plastic holders to just hold the screws as they are pretty loose right now so by being careful and we may lose some screws now you're gonna see that we have the other sides of the screws and we used one already so now I'm going to fix this one, which I believe it will be the easier one for you to see. So we, I'm just going to put it on the side, just pressure it, and there you go. Okay. 
and the last one is gonna be here. It's gonna be a pretty difficult for one for you to see that, and for me actually. I see it magnetic. There you go. Now we can leave it, and now this plastic uh, retainers, can I say, will hold this in place while we will mount the cooler into it. So now, uh, after we uh, install the screws and the brackets on the cooler, what we will basically have to do is, of course, unpeel uh, this uh, little thing and. Uh, uh, put some of the thermal compound in on the CPU and then we will have to fit these we, we're gonna leave these uh, bolts uh, these nuts uh, a little bit loose so we're gonna fit it on the CPU I guess it will go this way like that mm -hmm. and then we're gonna turn the motherboard around and basically tighten it from underneath as this one shows over here. So putting the thermal compound, putting the cooler on, and then turning this, the motherboard around and tightening from underneath, which is a very good way. Mm -hmm. So uh, we found a couple of things. So first of all, in uh, the manual, it says that uh, in uh, if we fit the nut and the thread in the middle of the bracket, it's for the 1150, I guess this is the CPU. Ours, which is the 1200, uh, it's the same as the 1150 as I saw on the website. So we mounted uh, these ones in the center. And now, as the manual says, we're gonna mount it uh, this way. So the airflow comes from this way and blows it out of the other, other side. So we're gonna try and mount it here these screws and yeah it seems like they're all in and now uh, we're not gonna take this on video but we're gonna leave the motherboard and start screwing from underneath so uh, the cooler comes inside of course, we're gonna also put, we're gonna also take off the film, and we're gonna also put the thermal compound in there. So I'm gonna show you uh, how much uh, really you can uh, uh, you can put, you should put on on it. So we take the thermal paste and we put like a pea size. So this is more than enough over here. We don't need to use any more. And uh, what we're gonna do, we can save that. We can save that in uh, for future use. We basically, if you see now, uh, we have put it on. And before uh, lifting this, uh, the motherboard and uh, turning it the other way, we can. What we can do is we can tighten a bit the screws so it doesn't fall off under its own weight. So now, while we're doing the uh, tightening of uh, the cooler, you will see that we're doing all we're tightening all the screws from the bottom, so one by one. And uh, a, an interesting thing to see is the thermal compound between the actual cooler and uh, the CPU. Now uh, we're gonna insert the NVMe in. Oh, the screw is here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna slot the NVMe into this slot over here, which looks very much compatible. And then we're gonna screw it in with that screw. I'm not sure if I have to take the screw off, but uh, let's do it anyway. Taking the NVMe. We're fitting it inside. So 
then we will lie it down. Oh, you have two ports for NVMe. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, let's use the top one. But I'm not seeing how this will fit. Just push more, maybe. Yes. That was a <laughs> nice click in there. And I uh, hope nothing's broke, which it doesn't look so. It still flaps, nice. And after we insert the NVMe, <laughs> we're gonna have a pain mounting it in, but we're lucky. This is secure, finger tight, it looks in. 500 GB installed. So now it's uh, we're ready for the graphics card. This is the slot for the graphics card over here. So we're gonna push the flap open, and then we're gonna take the graphics card and just place it this way into the motherboard. Because obviously we have this bracket, we will have to lift the motherboard uh, a bit just to make sure that uh, it both sides lock in. So we heard the click, both clicks, and now it's properly inserted in. So for the power unit, we used, of course, the manual to connect them. But can you really go wrong? Well, except if you really, really try, no. This is the 16 pin or the long one. And it's in there. Then we have the USBs, which is which are over here. We connect these ones. Over here we have all the power switches, uh, the LEDs, and also the system fan, which we haven't connected. But I brought the case next to the motherboard, so we can basically use the power switch to turn on the uh, motherboard and do a dry run, a dry test. Uh, what else we have here? And we have the HD audio over here, which is the auxiliary uh, inputs, the 3.5 jacks on the front of the case. Power plug. Connect this here. Switch it on. And make sure that no the fans can freely move. K1, all the cables are plugged in. Yeah, this fan can move off the GPU. So always make sure the fans can actually move. Okay, and now we're turning it on. And if I press the power button here, it should turn on. Okay, we're seeing the fan, the CPU fan is working. And we're not getting any signal on the screen yet. Yes, oh yes. Look at this, look at this guy. There you go, and now we are in the BIOS. Nice, everything looks perfect. Everything is connected. 
CPU fan is running, a graphics card fan is running, and of course the fan of the power supply is running as well. Nice. So the first thing that we're gonna mount, uh, now that we know that the PC works, it's the power supply. So if you look at the case, you have a power supply bracket over here that uh, fits into on the uh, face of the power supply. So now what Alex is doing is uh, taking off the four screws so we can take off the bracket, fit it on the power supply, and then fit the power supply with the bracket in the in the box in the tower so now as we can see we have uh, fitted the power supply and uh, it's good to go so if you see we put the fan facing downwards because the actually the power supply sucks air from underneath and pushes it out from the back over here there you go so after we connected all the like most of the needed cables in the motherboard and now we took off uh, this uh, connector here that is basically uh, gonna show us give us access to the graphics card so after we have installed uh, everything and the GPU in there and all the cables now I, I want you to see from the back of the case uh, we have taken off one of the flaps here you just uh, wiggle it up and down until it falls off and now we will mount this connector uh, this basically bracket that it came with the uh, case and this will hold actually hold the uh, GPU and uh, which it will give it support as you see if you use the case upside uh, if you use the case upright uh, all of the weight of the GPU falls down and pulls on the motherboard but now you have extra support 